The long fight between those who are for crocheting dreadlocks and those who are against crocheting dreadlocks. Who will be the winner? You decide. When you're starting dreadlocks, there are a few questions you need to answer, questions such as freeform or backcomb, sign or homemade, to crochet or to not crochet, and it's this question of whether to crochet or not that really seems to get people. There are online dreadlock communities, forums and Facebook pages, places where people converse about all things dreadlock related, sharing knowledge, experiences and answering questions, and for most questions you're going to get a relatively straightforward answer, such as in the case of, should I wax my dreadlocks? No. For other questions, the responses may be a bit more varied, such as in the case of should I use twist and rip or back comb. You will usually find a fairly balanced response from people that have used both methods. People will usually say why they went with that method, where they'd use it again, where they'd recommend it, and who they'd recommend it for. However, if you ask about whether to crochet or not, suddenly everything explodes. Lines are drawn, people take sides, and vicious arguments erupt. On one side you've got people claiming that their dreadlocks simply don't work without crocheting, on the other side you've got people saying that crocheting will cause your dreadlocks to instantly fall out and disintegrate. There is a great deal of bullying surrounding the topic of crocheting from both sides. You may find people that crochet their dreadlocks criticizing the aesthetic, criticizing the look of neglect dreadlocks. You may find people with neglected dreadlocks criticizing the entire process of crocheting, claiming it to be a cheat, a corner cut, or a lack of patience. Personally, I don't find any of these bullying-based arguments to be productive, especially considering how much time different dreadheads can spend trying to argue for their right to express themselves in the way that they want to express themselves with their hair, for them to then step back and argue among each other about being all for expressing themselves with their hair in one way, but being unsupportive of a very similar but only slightly different way, I just don't think anyone really benefits from that. As you may imagine, a significant proportion of my inbox is devoted to people asking questions about whether to crochet or not, and basically people just wanting to sort of get past all the argument and get the answer to the question they originally asked. For those that don't know, very briefly, Crocheting involves the use of a crochet hook or a crochet needle. It's a needle with a little hook on the end. The needle is passed through the body of the dreadlock. The hooked end appears on the other side. It is used to hook up some loose hair, a lump, a bump, or a loop, or a loose tip. You can then pull the hook into the dreadlock, pull the needle backward, deposit the loose hair inside the dreadlock, and then that loose hair is now stuck inside the dreadlock. Whereas a lot of dreadlock maintenances involve very slowly encouraging the hairs to lock up over time, crocheting can provide instant results. Depending on how much crocheting is done, the results can vary from a subtle tidy to a complete and total sculpt. The changes that occur as a result of crocheting are generally fairly permanent, although it depends on the individual's dreadlocks. If you still have very young, loose dreadlocks, you can find that the body of the dreadlock is not yet mature enough to hold on to everything that you crochet in. And if you're pulling in lumps, bumps, and loops, you can find that more lumps, bumps, and loops continue to form as the dreadlock continues to mature because the dreadlock is not yet done progressing. However, with more mature dreadlocks, you can find that the crochet maintenance leads to much more permanent results with loose hairs getting pulled in and generally staying pretty pulled in, but that does not, of course, guarantee that other patches of loose hairs will not present themselves over time as they tend to do with dreadlocks. The instant and usually fairly permanent changes that occur as a result of crocheting allows people who are unhappy with certain aspects of their dreadlocks to change those aspects. This may be particularly useful for people who are in situations such as employment or education where they cannot have their dreadlocks looking a certain way and need to change how they look instantaneously. And of course there are also people whose dreadlocks have started to develop naturally in a path that is not necessarily the path that they want their dreadlocks to take. Crocheting allows people to change their dreadlocks in that way. On to the arguments surrounding risks, problems, damage and destruction. Now there are many risks associated with crocheting, several of them depend on the experience of the person doing the work. It is possible to over tighten a dreadlock via crochet, you can pull too much loose hair into one section and that can make the dreadlocks very tight and very stiff. And you see the problem is a lot of people want their dreadlocks to be tight, it's sort of this mindset that you want your dreadlocks to be tight as possible, but people then may end up in a situation where they regret it if the dreadlocks are super tight and stick out and don't lay down in the way or flow in the way that they wanted them to flow because they're just too tight. Over tightening dreadlocks can also hinder the natural progress of the dreadlock, can slow down the natural progress of the dreadlock because the hairs just can't move and develop properly anymore. This is especially apparent in the roots. You can very easily over tighten roots if you try and crochet them. There's a huge temptation there because young dreadlocks will have usually quite loose roots and it can seem like the dreadlocks are growing out and there's a real temptation to go in and just crochet those up tight. Problem is, short term, that can make the roots very sore and make your scalp irritated and has 
potential risks leading on to hair thinning and things like that, but that's covered in a different video. The problems with regards to dreadlocks and progress is that if you over tighten roots, you inhibit their ability to lock and mature on their own. Dreadlocks, once matured, will lock and form as the hair grows out. So you don't need to redo dreadlocks as the hair grows out, it forms naturally. If you over tighten roots, you can put them in a sort of situation where they're unable to continue to progress on their own. And they will, again, start to naturally lock if you give them long enough, but it takes some time for them to grow out and start to lock again. And a lot of people will then be tempted in the meantime to crochet again. And you can end up in this sort of cycle where you constantly crochet the uh, new growth as it comes in rather than ever letting it mature. And as we'll get to later, the more times that you crochet the hair, the greater the risks. Anyway, the main risk and main topic for debate or argument, whichever way you look at it, is the risk of breaking hairs and damaging dreadlocks. Now, anytime you introduce friction to dreadlocks, there's the potential to break hairs. When you're passing a crochet needle through the body of a dreadlock, not all the hairs inside are going to magically part to let the needle pass. Some are going to get caught, some are going to get snagged, some are going to get broken. So when you push the needle through, some may get broken. When you pull the needle back, some may get broken. And if you pull too hard on the hairs that you've hooked, some of those may get broken too. The words which I will often use with regards to crocheting are risk and potential. I use these words very deliberately. Risk refers to the likelihood of something happening. So if you're going in and crocheting your dreadlocks for the first time, it's very unlikely that they're just going to disintegrate and fall apart, although some people will like to paint that picture. However, the more times that you crochet the dreadlock, the more this risk increases and the higher the likelihood that you will start to notice negative effects and have those effects affect you and your dreadlocks. The potential for damage depends on a few things, one of those things being the size of the hook. The larger the hook, the larger the needle, the greater the potential for damage. The needles come in many different sizes. Rule of thumb is the smaller the better. If you're going with something the size of a knitting needle, you're going to be punching huge holes and just tearing out masses of hair. So smaller hooks will not be able to hook as much in one go, but you won't have to part as many hairs in order to get it through and so you can help manage the risks. The number of times in which the hair has been crocheted obviously plays a huge role. When you crochet a dreadlock once, you're probably gonna break so few hairs that you're not gonna notice it. You're, you're just not gonna be in a situation unless you're using something the size of a wooden spoon that you're just not gonna notice the breakage. But those hairs once broken do not repair. So you may break an insignificant number the first time you crochet the dreadlocks, but then that may double the second time you do it and triple. And it can build over time. So the number of times in which the dreadlocks have been crocheted will play a very large role in how much your dreadlocks are affected negatively by the maintenance. Another factor which is a lot harder to quantify is the skill and experience of the person doing the work. Someone who is more experienced and skilled, skilled is very important just because someone has done a lot of crochet work does not necessarily mean that they're all that skilled. Someone Someone who is skilled will know the right hook to use, where to use it, and where not to use it, and will help also manage the amount of risk. I find that both the temptation to crochet and the risk as a result of that crocheting is at its peak when the dreadlocks are young, when the dreadlocks are new. Young dreadlocks by their very nature will be loose, messy, lumpy, bumpy, all these things that crocheting can potentially fix. The temptation to crochet young dreadlocks can be almost overwhelming, so many different things that can be an annoyance and just so easily tied it with the crochet hook. The problem is young dreadlocks won't necessarily hold up so well to the crochet maintenance. As I mentioned earlier, they may not be strong enough to hold on to different bits of loose hairs that you've crocheted in, especially at the tips. Trying to blunt really young soft dreadlocks is not necessarily going to be all that permanent of a change. Pulling in every last lump, bump and loop, while that may have a temporary cleanup, you cannot guarantee that the dreadlocks will not continue to form more lumps, bumps and loops over time as they continue to tighten. And the potential for risk becomes particularly great when someone with brand new young dreadlocks who does not view the dreadlocks yet properly as a progression and views it more as a single these are dreadlocks. If someone who's new to dreadlocks and does not really understand how they progress and just grabs any old crochet hook and starts going to town, there's a serious potential there for damage. There's a great scope for crocheting. You'll find people with mature dreadlocks who get their dreadlocks tied it up by a professional a handful of times per year and that's them good and set. On the other end, you'll find people who have brand new dreadlocks who go in and hack away at their dreadlocks with the crochet hook every single day of the week. And I'm sure you can sort of see where the greatest potential for damage is there. My personal view when it comes to looking at crocheting in general is to look at it in the same way as I would look at bleaching hair. Now that might sound a bit strange at first, but stick with me, I think. It makes sense, I hope it makes sense. Okay, so when you bleach hair, when someone has decided to bleach hair, they're generally pretty aware that there's a potential for damage there. Most people know that when you bleach hair, you can damage the hair. 
The amount of damage depends on which bleach product you're using, who is applying the product, and how many times your hair has been bleached in the past. Now, despite the potential for damaging the hair there, people still choose to bleach their hair. And that's because they weigh up the risks of hair damage against the reward of bleached hair. Now, if you really want bleached hair, it's the only way to achieve that look. You can sit out in the sun all summer, but you're not gonna turn brunette hair bleached blonde. It's just not gonna happen. So you weigh up the risks against the rewards and decide how they balance out for you. I look at crocheting in a very similar way. With crocheting, the potential for damage depends on the tool that you're using, the person that's using the tool, and the number of times in which they've been crocheted in the past. Again, the results are pretty unique. The only way that you're gonna get your dreadlocks looking crocheted is to crochet them. You have to weigh up the risk against the reward, the risk of damage against the reward of getting your dreadlocks to look that certain way. Because crochet dreadlocks, that is a look that some people really aspire to, not everyone, but some people want their dreadlocks to look that way. And if that is a look that you aspire to, just like sitting out in the sun all summer is not gonna bleach your hair to platinum blonde, waiting for your dreadlocks to look crocheted by neglecting them for years is not necessarily gonna provide you with the results you want. You can wait five, 10, 15 years of neglect and it's still not going to look like they were crocheted for better or worse. Some people want a natural, neglected, freeform, organic look. Some people want a smooth, uniform, crocheted look. Now, following the path for one and expecting the results for the other is probably not gonna pay off for you. So you have to be aware of what you want and choose accordingly. At the end of the day, you're growing your hair for you. You're dreadlocking your hair for you. You're the one that has to wear them, grow them, live with them. You're the one that takes them around with you, and so you should at least be considering what you want above what other people want. I think it's very easy to get persuaded by different people when it comes to dreadlocks, because people will be very opinionated when it comes to crocheting either one way or the other, and you gotta remember that you're the one that has to live with it. So some people will try to convince you one way or the other, but if that's not actually what you want, it's probably not a good idea to follow that advice. You have to take a step back and remember, you know, what it is that you want and remember that what you do to your dreadlocks you're the one that has to live with that for better or for worse. I think each person has to decide whether crocheting is right for them on an individual person to person basis. I don't think anyone else can decide for you. I think each person should be in a position to make an informed decision whether it's the right thing for them. They should be able to see all the pros, all the cons, and be able to weigh it up. I think it's very important to specify weighing it up. Pros and cons will apply differently to different people depending on what you want. I will say that I understand why people are so strongly opinionated on this topic, as on the one side, the potential for damage is real. It's not fabricated. There is a serious potential for damage, and if you're not prepared for that, or if you're not you know, being aware or responsible when it comes to your maintenance, then it's something that you can very easily run into. I've had lots of different people come to me sending questions where they've ended up in all sorts of different situations. People who've gone into crocheting blind and aware of what to use, how to use it, or any of the pros and cons and end up hacking their hair to pieces. Some people who wanted really natural looking dreadlocks but got impatient and thought that crocheting was the way to speed along the process and then realizing their dreadlocks no longer look the way that they want them to look and they may never look the way that they want them to look now. I've had messages from people that have ended up with thinning either on the body or the roots and you know you just have to be aware and responsible and make that decision for yourself and live with your decision but on the other end there's all this negative stuff on the other end there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there who have crocheted their dreadlocks for maintenance and been incredibly happy with their dreadlocks. People will maintain their dreadlocks in this way either because they need to for their employment or their education or whatever, whatever situation they're in, or simply that's because that's the way they want their dreadlocks to look. If someone makes an informed decision regarding the pros and cons, then they should be able to have their hair the way they want to have their hair. That's sort of the whole point, isn't it? Now, if you've ever asked me what my opinion is on crocheting, whether I recommend it or not, you will know, I don't hide it, that I do not recommend crocheting. It's not something that I'm comfortable giving out as a recommendation. I feel responsible for any advice that I give. I have weighed up the pros and cons of crocheting and I've decided that it's not for me, and I've seen the potential damage that it can cause in the wrong hands, and because I don't know who's going to follow what advice, I would not be at all comfortable just saying yes, go and crochet your hair, because the potential there is 
it's not something that I'd be comfortable with. My advice has always been wait. Don't crochet the hair. I think if you are in a position where someone can tell you to wait, then you're not yet decided anyway. And waiting, the dreadlocks will continue to progress whether you crochet or not. So giving the dreadlocks longer will allow you longer to make your decision. It will allow the dreadlocks to develop further. You may find that they develop the way that you want them to develop without the need for the crochet hook anyway. And even if they haven't, there would be less there that you'd potentially need to work on and the results would be more permanent. And I'm much more comfortable giving that advice rather than saying, yeah, yeah, go crochet show do what you want because I don't think that I personally would be able to live with all the results that come back to me. At the same time, I don't try and stop people crocheting. If you are a responsible adult, you've weighed up the pros and cons and you've decided that crocheting is the look that you want and it's worth it to you as an individual without any sort of outside pressure to do one thing or the other, then who is anyone to tell you no? It's your hair, it's your happiness, you should do what you want. I mean, if you're growing dreadlocks, that's normally part of the point. And so I hope that my personal position on crocheting dreadlocks is understandable in that I would not feel comfortable telling someone one way or the other when I don't know what it is that they want and I don't know how they're going to go about it. I would not be comfortable with that responsibility, but I'm still not going to stop someone once they've made that decision for themselves. I hope that makes sense and it's understandable. Okay, so hopefully that sort of demystified this whole situation, maybe, possibly, surrounding crocheting dreadlocks. When it comes to a permanent decision like crocheting, it's probably not something you should rush into. The hair will continue to progress whether you crochet or not. You can delay that decision and still be able to crochet later, but if you rush into it, you cannot uncrochet later. So I think you should take your time, but if you've made that decision, I don't think anyone else is in a position to tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing to your hair if you're responsible grown-up person that's weighed up the pros and cons for yourself. If you found this video helpful, useful, informative, uh, please do click the like button because all likes are appreciated. If you'd like to see more videos from myself in the future, you can call subscribe. If you're looking for more information from myself, you can find all my stuff on lazydreads.com and you can join in on facebook.com forward slash lazydreads. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again for the next one. Farewell.